Hi, I'm Liz Kettle and I'm here at Artistic Artifacts today to talk to you about Luchador. Luchador is this really cool new fabric that we have stolen from the automotive and furniture manufacturer industries. It's kind of unique in that it's a stabilizer and it is a non-woven stabilizer. It has a bit of a lacy spider web kind of finish to it and you can't rip it, you have to cut it, but you can use a heat tool to cut it, you can burn it, you can paint it, you can do all kinds of really cool things with it. It comes in three different weights. The lightest weight is this 25 gram and you can see it's very airy so if you're doing collages and you want a very airy layer this is a really good one to use. The mid weight is a 70 gram and it's a little sturdier, uh, has lots of different uses, it's kind of your all-purpose weight. And then there's the 100 gram, and I tend to use the 100 gram a lot because I like to make books with it, and I'll show you a sample of that later. It's really thick and sturdy. Uh, the only problem with it is it's white, though, so let's go and see how we can color it. I'm going to tell you about my tools first. Some of the things you can use to color are Copic markers. They're really fun. They come in lots of different cool colors. They're an alcohol uh, dye-based marker, so they are pretty permanent on the fabric. You're not going to be washing this anyways, but you're not going to have these fade on you, which is really important with the marker. You can use any kind of textile paint or acrylic paint. This is colorized by Stuart Gill, and it's very thick. So when you're using the thicker paints, you want to dilute them with water. And when I paint a sample for you, you'll see just how watered down we do it. The product I use the most is Dynaflow. It's a jacquard paint. Uh, it's very fluid acrylic. And the reason I like it is because even though it's very fluid, it has a lot of pigment in it, which is important when you want to have bright colors. And I actually water this down even more. So I'll show you that in just a second. And you need a heat embossing tool. These are uh, not hair dryers. Hair dryers don't really work to do this process, so you want a heat tool. Lots of good fun uses for burning. And the other heat tool I use is this one by Walnut Hollow, and this is what we use to burn designs and shapes and cut out edges. And you need something to hold your uh, luchador down when you're working with it. Uh, this is just a little knit, plastic knitting needle. Just anything, pencil will work. All right, so let's go color. All right, here's my little jar of Dynaflow. And Dynaflow comes in these small ones, but small containers. It comes in large containers too, but you'll see we don't really use a whole lot of it. So I just have a couple drops in there, and I'm going to dilute it about halfway with water. Just kind of mix it up a little bit. And this part's kind of a no brainer, you just paint it on. As you can see, it's a little bit, comes out a little bit lighter on the luchador. And it will dry a little bit lighter, but you can also um, add multiple coats if you decide you, it's too light. Or you can mix in more pigment. I didn't have very much of the paint in there. So it takes the paint really well. I like to get it really saturated so that it goes through to both sides. So I have a two-sided product. I can use either side in my work. Um, when I'm painting Luchador at home, I paint huge sheets. Six, I do cover my entire table with Luchador, so paint it all at one time. And you can get some really cool effects. Like you can see how it's splotchy here. If I leave it on this paper to dry, I'll get some of these splotchy marks. If I hang it to dry, I will sometimes get a bit of a... Um, ombre look where it's lighter at the top and then darker at the bottom. And if you put it on something that's textured, you'll get some of the texture in there. I've also put plastic wrap on top and you get some kind of wrinkles in it. It's very cool the things you can do with it. So play with your different painting techniques, tools, and see what you can come up with. Put that to the side. One of the other things I like to do with it is I use it a lot as a background layer in my artwork. 
forget my little pad. This is a, uh, an old mouse pad, and we use this when we're stamping on um, any type of fabric to give yourself a little padded surface. It just makes your stamps uh, lines a little bit cleaner and crisper. And I'm just stamping up my ink on that. Put this down here. And press on it. Stamping isn't really very difficult. It's kind of a fun process. I like to use it as a background layer in a lot of my collages, either on fabric or on literature. So you can see here, I have this nice background layer that I can use. I can put an image on top, or I can just use this uh, as a, a separate layer. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how we um, heat distress this. This, I'm just going to start with the edge. This is a, the burning tool I told you about. And it's not going to look very, you, you, it's hard for you to see on the camera. But I'm just doing kind of a curved line here. And you can draw into this. And you can see I've got, I can just pull this away. And then I've got this nice little curvy uh, edge. You can draw, do any kind of drawing in it. You can draw shapes, you can draw uh, squiggly lines, you can just put holes in it, kind of burn holes randomly to make something look distressed. It's probably really hard to see. You'll, you could see that better in our close-up pictures later. Um, the other thing we can do is use the heat embossing tool. And when you use this tool, you want to keep the embossing gun moving over the surface pretty evenly and when it starts to distort, it will distort pretty quickly. Uh, it'll kind of, I'll work on this edge so you can see. This is why you want this little tool to hold it so you don't burn your fingers. So you can see how it's curling up that edge, getting, getting that really neat pinkly look. And then you can see here, that it's actually lacing my lacing my luchador. Let me get a piece of paper. So. See how you can get this? You can get some really awesome looks on uh, for things that look really time worn and old and distressed, like it came out of uh, something uh, buried for centuries or. You know, I don't, you can get lots of really cool looks with that, so that's fun. And I use it a lot, as a, like a, as I said, in a layer and a collage. The other thing we can do with Luchador is we can print on it. We can run it right through our printer. And uh, to do that, you need to have these. There's a couple ways, but this is the easiest. This is a full sheet office label. It's sticky on one side. So it's like for printing labels for mailing, except it's a full-size sheet, it's blank. So you peel this off and then place your luchador on top. Save these little pieces of paper because once you've printed on it, you can put the paper back down and save it and print a couple times. And this gives you a very lacy, ephemeral kind of feel to your photographs if you want something as a, that is very delicate looking. Other product I use with Luchador is um, Transfer Artist Paper, which is a product developed by Leslie Riley. And the Transfer Artist Paper gives you a beautiful, crisp image on the Luchador. But you still, uh, you can see this in our close up photos in our uh, t written tutorial. But there's little delicate lines, webbing lines, all through this photograph that give it a really interesting uh, texture more than your photograph. Now this product is heat distressible, as I just showed you. So one thing you do need to make sure when you're using heat transfer products is that your iron does not get too hot. My, I had a very um, old iron with this one and it got way too hot. So it's all kind of melted up the luchador here and here and didn't transfer there. But it's not a loss, I can just trim this off and I'll still have a great photograph to work with. Uh, let me show you some finished artwork. This piece here was done by Les, uh, Judy Gula. And this cute little collage has got uh, this piece of paint 
yellow painted luchador which has been laced just really nicely and it picks up the yellow paint in this gelatin print in the background. I think that's a beautiful piece. And this is a piece I did. It's just kind of a fun piece with um, a photo that I particularly like. It's a little uh, clown child walking a pig. I used image transfer paper, sorry, transfer artist paper to transfer my image on and I painted the edges and then I use the heat tool to cut out these scallops and there's little tiny holes in the edges so it looks like lace. Again, look at the close-up photos on our written tutorial so you can see those. And this is the book I was talking about. This is one of the classes that I teach on image transfer and I've used the, um, the heavyweight luchador to, for, for the actual pages of the book. And this one is themed on India. I just love these beautiful pictures. Here's an image transferred right on Luchador. You can stamp on it. You can paint on it. This is some gold wax. You can stitch on it. Uh, as you can see, I've stitched all over the, over the place. It's just a really great, fun product to use in your artwork. So get yourself some Luchador. It's available at Artistic Artifacts. Com and have a lot of fun playing with it. It's cool stuff.